In the passage from Romans 15, 1, 3, the Apostle Paul emphasizes the importance of supporting the weak and prioritizing the well-being of others over self-interest. He underscores this message by pointing to the ultimate example of selflessness, Jesus Christ. While many focus on the atonement and righteousness of Christ, Paul also highlights Christ's role as a model of moral conduct, especially in the realm of love. Paul urges believers to emulate Christ's love for one another. Interestingly, Paul references a scripture that might not seem immediately relevant to his point. This scripture speaks of the reproaches meant for God falling on Christ. Paul's choice of this particular scripture might seem unconventional, yet he seems to suggest that all scriptures, even those that might not seem directly relevant, offer lessons for believers. This approach underscores the depth of Paul's understanding of the scriptures and his commitment to showcasing Christ not just as a saviour, but also as a moral exemplar. In essence, Paul's message is about the importance of selflessness, love and emulating Christ's example in our interactions with others. Also, Charles Simeon illustrates Jesus Christ as an ideal example of selflessness and service towards others, presenting two key arguments about Christ, that he pleased not himself. In addressing Christ's lack of concern for his own pleasures, Simeon draws upon instances from Christ's incarnation, life and death to create his argument. He accentuates Christ's self-sacrifice in giving up a divine form to be in the likeness of sinful flesh, inheriting all our weaknesses except sin. This, Simeon underscores, was not done for Christ's self-pleasure or to benefit himself. Simeon continues with the example of Christ's humble life. Being a simple carpenter until the age of 30 and then receiving opposition and contempt from the Israelites and being subjected to severe evils and distresses, having nowhere to lay his head shows that Christ lived a life devoid of self-pleasure. Simeon points out that Christ's words and actions were often reasons for reproach and offence, but he endured this for the purpose of God's will, not his own pleasure. The commentary concludes with Simeon addressing Jesus' death, which testifies to the epitome of self-sacrifice and selflessness. Despite the extreme anguish that Jesus underwent before his crucifixion like his bloody sweat in Gethsemane and the abandonment by his father, yet he chose to drink the bitter cup. All these aspects indicate that Christ's primary focus was not on his pleasure, but was solely dedicated to executing God's will. Thus, by citing this, Simeon contends that as Jesus chose not to please himself, we too should follow the same path of selflessness and service towards others. Moreover, Simeon underscores the great sacrifice Jesus Christ made purely for the sake of humanity. Simeon refers to the passage cited by Apostle Paul, which was prophesied by David and pertains to Christ and his immense sufferings. Simeon stresses that anyone who was an enemy to God the Father was, by extension, also his enemy. He affirms that Christ bore all insults and indignities, being the target of every arrow directed against God, until he fulfilled every purpose his sufferings were meant to achieve. Christ's enduring love for God whose glory he sought to uphold and his dedication to redeeming sinful humanity is highlighted. The whole purpose of Christ's life, his sole focus was on providing salvation to humanity. This ultimate goal was the source of his joy and the motivation for his endurance of the cross and all associated shame. Furthermore, Simeon notes that every account in sacred scripture, the prophecies of the Old Testament, and the steadfast affirmations of the New Testament all point to the salvation of mankind as the central aim of all Christ's actions and sufferings. He sacrificed his sinless nature to bear the burden of our sins so that we might be clothed with God's righteousness. In addition, Simeon asserts two principles. We should not always follow our own desires and we must consider the impact of our actions on others. He underscores that embracing Christian liberty should not be used as a license to disregard others' feelings or convictions. Those who are strong in their faith should compassionately accommodate the weak and avoid indulging in behaviours that might upset or mislead them. This spirit of self-denial should be proportionally more prevalent among those who identify themselves as spiritually stronger. Simeon criticises those within the church who aggressively assert their religious freedom, even splitting congregations over minor rituals or traditions that may hold no moral implications but are simply established by law or custom. He does not advocate for the imposition of anything wrong or doubtful, but believes that rules and orders of human creation with no inherent immorality should be respected for the sake of unity and peace. He points to the examples of Jesus Christ and St. Paul, who complied with rituals and laws notwithstanding their irrelevance to their spiritual standing or message. Jesus, notwithstanding his sinlessness, submitted himself to John's baptism, a rite not required by Mosaic law. In order to pay a tax from which he was exempt, he performed a miracle. 
Similarly, St. Paul willingly served others and adapted to different communities for the sake of spreading the gospel. Simeon exhorts Christians to replicate this selfless, considerate spirit and curb their freedom in matters of indifference, as opposed to adamantly defending their rights or deploying their freedom for malevolent intentions. In summary, Simeon teaches us to exercise our liberty cautiously, with a loving concern for others' spiritual well-being. Further, Simeon highlights that a Christian's goal should be to foster their neighbour's spiritual growth, not through sinfulness, but by exhibiting understanding, tenderness and forbearance even when they appear weak or superstitious. In cases where one's actions might upset or offend another, Simeon encourages believers to make concessions to avoid harming their relationship or potentially crushing their faith. He aligns this behaviour with the Apostle Paul's teachings, where he asked followers not to prioritise their own interests, but to be mindful of the benefits for others in an attempt to facilitate salvation. However, the most significant example Simeon highlights is that of Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his heavenly glory and endured severe pain for the salvation of not only his followers but also his most bitter enemies. Hence, he didn't pursue self-pleasure. Drawing from Christ's model of extreme self-denial, Simeon challenges believers not to hesitate in denying themselves. He reinforces that their hopeful anticipation of salvation depends on the same virtues that Christ showed, unselfishness and consideration for others. Therefore, instead of focusing solely on their own interests, believers should concern themselves with those of others, embodying the mindset demonstrated by Christ. Besides, Simeon reflects on the nature and impact of true religion. He indicates that genuine religion is not merely about beliefs or external actions, but about the inner dispositions and habits of the mind. True religion involves selflessness, mirroring the mindset of Christ Jesus. Simeon paints a picture of a world transformed by such religion, where selflessness and Christ-like behaviour are the norm. He acknowledges that while some might expect such piety to be universally admired, the reality is different. Jesus, the epitome of this selfless love, faced hatred and opposition. Yet, Simeon argues that there's an inherent beauty in this kind of conduct that is self-evident. He imagines a world where every Christian emulates Christ not seeking personal pleasure but aiming to serve and benefit others. Such a world would be filled with happiness and harmony. Simeon concludes by urging believers to cultivate this disposition in themselves and others, to focus on all that is virtuous and praiseworthy, and to demonstrate that they belong to Christ through the Spirit within them. Additionally, Simeon observes a stark contrast between the superficial politeness of society and the genuine love and humility exemplified by Jesus Christ. He notes that in refined society there's an appearance of good behaviour and manners, which, while beneficial for societal interactions, doesn't necessarily reflect a true love for God. This societal politeness is often insincere and is rarely practised with genuine love for God at its core. It's also limited, often being displayed in public but abandoned in private or domestic settings. Also, Simeon laments that this superficiality isn't just limited to the world, but is prevalent within the church. He observes a lack of genuine Christian spirit among many who claim to follow the gospel. Instead of promoting unity and love, different factions within the church often create divisions, preventing the harmony that should naturally exist among believers. Such behaviour is contrary to the teachings and example of Jesus Christ. He maintains that it's contradictory for individuals to indulge in divisive and insincere behaviours, while still identifying themselves as followers of Christ. Such duality, where one claims to follow Christ but acts contrary to his teachings, is likened to a fountain producing both sweet and bitter water simultaneously. Simeon concludes with a warning to those who harbour such earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. Such individuals, he warns, will not be deemed acceptable worshippers in the eyes of God, neither on earth nor in heaven. He urges believers to pray for a transformation of their hearts, to be filled with genuine love and unity. Only then can they truly glorify God in the manner that he deserves. Moreover, Simeon points out the profound importance of engaging with the Holy Scriptures for spiritual growth. He contends that the primary aim of reading the Bible should be personal spiritual improvement. This involves not just understanding the literal content, but deeply reflecting on the spirit and disposition conveyed through its precepts and the lives of the saints. Simeon laments that many might read passages like the 69th Psalm multiple times without grasping the essence highlighted by St. Paul. He suggests that merely reading the scriptures without applying them practically to one's life is a missed opportunity. The true value of the scriptures is unlocked when they are internalised and reflected upon in the context of one's personal spiritual journey. 
He encourages believers to make it a daily practice to find and meditate on passages that deepen their understanding of Jesus Christ and inspire them to emulate his image. Simeon references the idea that the scriptures were written for our learning and edification. He urges readers to treasure every passage, ponder its implications and apply its teachings for spiritual growth. By doing so, believers can experience a transformative journey, growing closer to Christ and becoming more like him through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, Simeon is reflecting on Romans 15, 5, 6, reiterating the necessity of unity and selflessness in glorifying God. Simeon points out that the early Christian churches faced numerous challenges, including the diverse backgrounds of its members and the inherent selfishness found in human nature. He suggests that one of the primary goals of the gospel of Christ is to rectify this selfishness, fostering a community where individuals prioritize the well-being of others over their own desires. Simeon acknowledges that the scriptures not only provide guidance on how to overcome selfish tendencies, but also offer shining examples of selflessness to inspire believers. Paul urges believers to be united in thought and speech in their worship of God, embodying the teachings and spirit of Jesus Christ. Through this unity they can truly glorify God, transcending the limitations and corruptions of the human heart. In addition, Simeon delves into the example of Christ as a model for selflessness and sacrifice. Simeon repeats the pre-incarnate state of Christ, highlighting his eternal glory and joy in the presence of the Father. If Christ had acted solely out of self-interest, he would have left humanity to its fate, much like the fallen angels. However, Christ's actions were the antithesis of self-centeredness. He chose to take on human form embracing all the vulnerabilities and sufferings associated with it. Throughout his earthly life, he faced opposition and endured immense suffering, culminating in his sacrificial death. This was not a mere act of benevolence but a profound sacrifice to redeem humanity from eternal damnation and reconcile us with God. In essence, instead of prioritizing his own well-being, Christ put humanity's salvation above his own comfort and glory. Further, Simeon underlines the profound obligation upon believers to emulate the example set by Jesus Christ. Simeon contrasts the inherent nature of fallen man who is predominantly driven by personal gratification with that of the redeemed man, who, despite being saved, still often leans towards selfishness. He notes the human tendency to prioritize self, even to the extent of justifying self-indulgence under the guise of duty. This, Simeon suggests, is a misdirection of our conscience which we manipulate to serve our own desires. However, Simeon underscores that true love, the kind exemplified by Jesus, should reign supreme in our hearts. It should be the guiding force behind every action and decision. He presents a powerful imagery, suggesting that even if it meant temporarily foregoing the joys of heaven or enduring the torments of hell, such sacrifices would barely measure up to the standard set by Jesus for the benefit of others. This profound love and self-sacrifice demonstrated by Jesus is the benchmark Simeon believes all believers should aspire to. In essence, Simeon's reflection on this passage is a call to selfless love, urging believers to look beyond their own interests and prioritize the well-being and salvation of others, just as Christ did for humanity. Last but not least, Simeon underscores the importance of unity in the church and the aspiration to glorify God collectively. The lack of unity and harmony in the church can lead to disrepute and dishonor to God. On the other hand, when the church operates in unity, it becomes a reflection of heaven on earth. The ultimate goal for every believer should be to glorify God and this should be pursued with a unified heart, mind and faith. Simeon acknowledges the challenges in achieving such unity, given human nature's inherent impatience and propensity for irritation. If one were to rely solely on human capabilities, the goal would seem unattainable. However, Simeon points to God as the source of all that is needed. If believers require patience, they can turn to God who embodies patience in its entirety. Similarly, if they seek comfort, God is the ultimate source of comfort, willing to bestow it generously. Simeon encourages believers to look to God with hope and expectation, believing that God can transform the human heart. Just as God inscribed his laws on stone tablets, he can also inscribe them on human hearts. God's promise to his church and people is unwavering, backed by his covenant and oath. In sum, Simeon urges believers to prioritize the well-being of others over their own interests. They should esteem others higher than themselves and seek the salvation of many. By doing so, they not only emulate Christ, but also bring glory to God. In conclusion, both Apostle Paul and Charles Simeon emphasize the significance of emulating Jesus Christ's selflessness and love towards others. 
Paul, drawing from scriptures, portrays Christ as a moral exemplar, urging believers to learn from even seemingly unrelated scriptures. Simeon, on the other hand, extensively illustrates Christ's life, underscoring his sacrifice and dedication to fulfilling God's will over pursuing personal pleasures. Besides, Simeon highlights the importance of considering others' well-being, criticizing those who assert their religious freedom aggressively, causing divisions within the church over minor rituals or traditions. He advocates for a spirit of self-denial, urging believers to follow the examples of Jesus and St. Paul, who accommodated others' beliefs and traditions to foster unity and peace. Simeon accentuates fostering neighbors' spiritual growth through understanding and forbearance, even when their beliefs appear weak or superstitious, aligning this approach with Paul's teachings. Additionally, Simeon reflects on the nature of true religion, envisioning a world transformed by selflessness and Christ-like behaviour. He contrasts this with the superficial politeness observed in society and within the church, which often lacks genuine love for God. Simeon warns against this duality, urging believers to cultivate genuine love and unity to truly glorify God. Also, Simeon underscores the importance of engaging with scriptures for personal spiritual growth, encouraging believers to reflect deeply on the teachings and apply them in their lives. Moreover, he highlights the necessity of unity and selflessness in glorifying God, pointing to the early Christian church's efforts to overcome selfish tendencies and foster a community centered on others' well-being. Lastly, Simeon delves into Christ's example of selflessness and sacrifice, affirming his profound sacrifice to redeem humanity. He urges believers to emulate this selfless love, prioritizing others' well-being and salvation over personal interests. Simeon concludes by asserting the importance of unity in the church, urging believers to seek God's guidance to cultivate patience and comfort, ultimately glorifying God through a unified effort.